inducted into the Hall of Fame. The Hamsters will be joining the Motor Maids, the Jack Pine Gypsies, the Christian Motorcycle Association, and the AMA in accepting this prestigious award. On behalf of the Hamsters, I'd like to thank the Hall of Fame and everybody involved with making this happen. I don't know if that video showed a little pie plate up there. I think it does. Uh, that pie plate started all this, believe it or not. Jimmy decided to take a pie plate and put a little hamster in the middle of it and say, hey, you hamsters, and drink until you puke. And uh, put it on the doors of everybody. And from there on, now you see what happened. I'd like to start by calling Steve Ellington up, Barry Cooney, Ed Kerr, Dave Perowitz, and Donnie Smith. Well, this is five of our founders. Thank you very much. Lonnie told me that he had thought about, when he was inducted, what he was to say. He thought about it for weeks, and that was after me this morning saying, hey, what should I say this morning? <laughs> and uh, he said, to tell a story, to tell good stories. This place is special because of the faces that you see that you haven't seen for an entire year. I remember, like, people would ask questions, and a lot of the questions I get, like, about the sculptures would be, like, where's the spokes? And I thought, oh, I should give them a thoughtful answer to that. And the real answer is it's a real pain. But the, the, the thoughtful answer would be that, you know, early cameras were, had more of a guillotine shutter than they did more of an Irish shutter. And so by the time that the vehicle entered the frame and left it, there was a distortion of the wheel, and it was elliptical to move forward, and that it gave that speed and that lunge. So I tried to put that in. And um, that's the explanation that I would give people the first 20 times they asked me. But then like the 21st time that patience was gone and everything else, and I would say, hey, there's no gas in the tank. His little heart doesn't beat, <laughs> you know. It's, it's just pretend, enjoy it. I <laughs> thank all for this great honor. I don't know if it's deserving, especially when I read, you know, 60 years Jack's come to this thing. And you guys are in your 40th anniversary of being around. And and I'm hardly that old. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, I, I appreciate uh, this recognition and the honor, and it, and it affects me greatly. And, and love you all, and thank you so very much. First of all, I want to thank the museum and the entire staff for their support and stuff. Uh, it's a real honor. I figure I've been to 60-some rallies, and I've been around the Motorcycle Museum since it started. It's nice to see it's in good hands. Thank you, Myrick and, and the entire crew. <laughs> I know Sugar got started in that, and he gave me the racing program too. So I had the two best jobs in the company. I could go to all the trade shows and all the race meets on a company expense account. You can't beat that. <laughs> the things that I think about my my career as a motorcycle business is really defined it best is the people I met along the way and the places I got to go. Motorcycles have just been really good to me. It's been all about the people I met, many of them in this room, all the movers and changers from the motorcycle world. And I glad enjoy being a part of you and it's this, this, this has been a great honor. So tell you what an honor it is to be here today. So, uh, it's been a long journey. I've, I've enjoyed it. I've got to experience a lot of great things, meet a lot of great people. This industry is tremendous. Uh, vehicle for meeting people in, uh, all over the world and, and finding out that we're not so different. You know, the people that uh, love motorcycles uh, have been a very special time. So I'm just glad that I'm still here and have the ability to keep making custom bikes. And, and I want to thank you again. Thank my family and all you wonderful people. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, dear, dear friends. Uh, don't worry, the 80s hair is gone, so it's, it's all safe now. Of course, my thanks to the board of directors of the Sturgis Motorcycle Museum and Hall of Fame, to Emma and to um, Myrick. I am grateful um, to be spending my life in an industry that has embraced me um, fairly unconditionally and for reasons I still don't understand, but I do appreciate you all so much for that. You know, I hear stories all the time from people I interview 
They started at two, they started at five, they had an uncle, a brother, a, a mother who brought them into biking. I had to marry into it, and I, it was rather late um, in my career, and that wouldn't have happened without Dennis. No matter where I go by myself, I always find friends when I get there. But a year after that experience, Gerald Reinhardt asked me to come down to Myrtle Beach and cover um, a charity ride he was doing. He wanted some riding shots and said, don't worry about it, we'll figure it out when we get to the event. So I got to the event and we started to take some pictures and get ready and then the engines began running and it was time to get on the bikes and go. But Gerald hadn't found me a back seat that I could shoot from. So as we're pulling out of the parking lot, he just motioned over there, jump on the back, jump on the back with Charlie. So I did, and a minute later, I'm on the back of an old beater shovel head, holding on for dear life on a little pee pad. <laughs> and I don't recall if I knew then that he was a wall of death rider. <laughs> <laughs> what I do recall is that a short time later that day, uh, we were drag racing Dave Perowitz on some South Carolina back roads. And really, the truth is I wake up every single day feeling like the most lucky woman in the world. <laughs> So many heroes, mentors, and loyal supporters who never gave up on me. It's very difficult to put into words the pride I feel to join you all. When I first started racing, my first priority was not to embarrass myself. After a few successful quarter mile passes, my next objective was to win races. After winning some races, I truly got hooked on speed, and I set my goals higher. Jesse Durins from Legendary Race Suspension, he is the reason why I am here today. He introduced me to the Bonneville Salt Flats in 2005, and now he introduced me to the Sturgis Hall of Fame. Special thanks to Tom Wright and Todd Wright. They truly put me on the map with that BMW, which was one of my favorite bikes to ride. And I set many land speed records on that bike. I'm truly proud of my 200 mile per hour red hat record that I did. And without that bike, I could have never done it. I owe a special thanks to Dennis Manning. He gave me the opportunity to race the Bub Streamliner with his guidance and faith and allowed me to pursue the title for the world's fastest motorcycle of 376 miles per hour. And I have one more person to uh, mention, and his name is Nick Trask. <laughs> He's the one that's responsible for telling me that I was racing down Scottsdale Road just trying to keep up with y'all. And he's the one that told me that I was out of control to take it to the racetrack. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a great journey. And uh, we have a movie coming out. It's called Rocket and Titans. It comes out next year, 2019. So make sure that you all go to it. <laughs> but I want to thank the Sturgis Museum Hall of Fame, Myrick and Emma for all their help and support and uh, appreciate everything. Thank you. So the last thing a friend of mine says as I'm coming up here is, man, this is a big deal, don't blow it. <laughs> I'll do my best. So when Myron called and asked me if I'd accept the nomination to the Freedom Fighters Hall of Fame, I wasn't really sure I wanted to be part of this bunch of ruffians. I need to sincerely thank the Sturgis Museum and Hall of Fame. This is critically important to our movement. Um, so why do I continue this work? Why do I do this? Why have I done this for three decades? Because it's transformational. When somebody gets together, they realize that they can go meet a Congress critter, and they can talk to them about a particular bill that we're trying to get sponsored. Two or three meetings later, they sponsor it, and then they realize that we can go into an office, and we can get a bill made or a law passed, or more importantly, something stopped. That's not good for the future of motorcycling. What drove me to start this is the theory and the philosophy that goes right here in the head and in, in the heart. And that's that freedom comes with the responsibility. We need to be responsible and act like we deserve it. And more importantly, we need to fight for it. It comes with the responsibility that we fight 
for what's so important. Had a chance yesterday to see this uh, nice uh, award that was uh, done by uh, Jeff Decker and everything, and it's uh, it's a really amazing uh, amazing piece. And I know Fred said they'll have a very special place for it at the uh, headquarters in Lamont at, uh, in uh, Janesville, Wisconsin. But uh, Fred, it's uh, it's all yours. Love you too. <laughs> I tell everybody, uh, I'm in my 80s now, but I still go to work early. I used to always be there before 7. Now I'm getting a little sore. I don't get into 10 minutes after, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm full of old stories, so almost every joke I've ever told, you know, I've told before, but one of them that's my absolute favorite, because there's so much truth to it, is they one time they asked the Philadelphia Orchestra conductor, what the hardest part of the job was. And he said, it's real simple. He says, you gotta quit waving that little stick right when the musicians quit playing. <laughs> <laughs> and, that, and that's really my job now at my company. It's like I got lots of good people, lots of them doing their jobs, and, uh, and we get to do it by just quitting the little stick right when they say, okay, you're done, get out of there. You know? And I everybody says, how long are you gonna work? And I says, well, truthfully, I hope someday I die at my desk, but not today. <laughs> I want to thank everybody. This is the nicest honor I've had in this industry. I've had a lot of good ones. But most of the things I've done in this business were done on a handshake. And I always said I don't have an attorney walking around on each arm when I do things. If you do what you say you're going to do and you pay people on time, it's amazing how they'll go along with you. So that, that's a big secret to our companies. And then the next best thing is that some of the best people I've ever had, I didn't find them. They walked through the front door and they created an atmosphere where they enjoyed working there. So I tell everybody, we have fun here and then we make a living at it. Not a bad system, right? You know? Thank you. Thank you.